And it's showtime. And we are live. Good morning, everybody. Happy. Here from the beautiful states of Wyoming and Tennessee. Tennessee, direct to you. (laughs) Sponsored by Death Wish Coffee. In the the country of Wales and the state of Tennessee. And Rich Genzel, pronghorn or not antelope. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to figure that out. What that? That's just water, or is that a coffee mug? It's a coffee cup. It's a Yeti. Oh, okay. And it's got a pronghorn on one side, beautiful pronghorn buck, and then it says, "This was." I worked with Rich for years, and he was a pronghorn biologist, and he was like, "They are not antelope." <laughs> yeah, but you're not having a hard time getting that changed. Well, in the law in the state of Wyoming, they are antelope. They probably are everywhere out in, there. Aren't in they? statute, I, I assume every state that has them calls them antelope. Well, until I learned better, my beard's crooked. Until I learned better, I didn't know any difference. All right, good, well, mor- good morning, Ian. Good morning, good morning Ian. everybody. Good morning, my wife. <sighs> And Francisco, if you're still in here, buddy, good morning. Good morning, Francisco. I don't have one of them fancy microphones, so I can't say that's fun to say. (laughs) You know what? I don't even have my microphone down here. Hang on a minute. (laughs) What do you need your microphone for? I hear you good. Can you hear me seriously? Yeah. It's probably two, four, five feet away from me. It's sitting it went, you, you sound perfect, dude. Wow, it's sitting way up there on top of my desk. I usually bring it down here closer. Well, if you can hear me, I'm not going to worry about it this morning. Then. What's the difference between pronghorn and antelope? Dumb down, please. <laughs> Ian wants to know. Dumb down. So pronghorn are the only relative they got on the planet. Are giraffes and okapis. That's who they're related closest to. Antelope have horns, and so do pronghorn, but antelope keep their horns forever, and pronghorns shed their horns every year. They're the only horned animal that does that, and they don't have dew claws. Every other ungulate on the planet has four hooves per foot. Or every other, you know, cattle, antelope, deer, etc. They have four four hooves or four toes per, per foot. And antelope That's the dew claws, right? Antelope only have two. Not it. Not at. Listen to me. Pronghorn only have two. See, even I fall into it. <laughs> well. Like I say, if that's all you knew until you learn better at an advanced age, like, I mean, yeah. I saw, until we started hanging around out west, I didn't know the difference. I mean, until you did, and I come out to visit you and stuff, and I'm sure, hey, Tina, good morning, ma'am. Morning, Tina. I'm sure, welcome back, Mark, she said. This is, yeah, I see that. She, uh, yeah, that's God's ungulate right there, that. That is one of the most special species on the planet. Well, are the are ant are I'm gonna say are are antelope and ant? Well, not an ant. Don't count antelope. Excuse me, at all. Are okapis or giraffes the one ungulates? They are. You know, I don't. I didn't know if they were or not. Yep. Man, that's a long way for a giraffe to hawk up a big cud to chew on. They've been they've been a long time separated though between yeah oh yeah a common ancestor between pronghorn and and okapis and giraffes. You're absolutely correct on that, Ian. He said okapis are crazy looking animals, and they are. They look like a they look like a mix between a giraffe and a and a, ze- a zebra, as the Brits say, and a I don't know what else in between. Some kind it's of all deer. for camouflage. It's all. Oh, I know it is, but I'm it's just all so you can point. hide in the Congo. Yeah, well, that's true. They hid for a long time. Apparently, what 
least as far as white men go. Nobody, they weren't known about till at least the last hundred years. I'm not sure when they were discovered. Yeah, it was another one of those, like, they thought it was a mystery animal, cryptid. Mm -hmm. But they're, uh, which, which yeah, is they're, my point about Bigfoot. If he was the size of an Okapi, somebody would have seen him by now because <laughs> <laughs> they found the Okapi. I'm, uh, hang on a minute. I, was, I got distracted because I looked for, I looked at something and it got me. I started, that's a, officially that would be a squirrel chasing. But he must got her pirate shirt on today. All right, cool. <laughs> I must have been sensing something there, Tina. I could go get my my uh blackbeard hat, my with the blackbeard flag on it. You got a hat with the flag on it? Well, my son bought, you know, I bought him a big, I bought him a great big old, like, not a parade flag, but a pretty big flag for his boat. When he got married, he wanted to float down the Green River and mess with Utah fly fishermen, which we did. <laughs> and we all dressed up like pirates, and those guys didn't know what the heck was happening. <laughs> Was there any way they might have identified you? If we you come had... around, we had a flotilla. We probably had fifteen boats, and everybody oh, wow. was everybody was flying pirate flags and and wearing pirate clothes. And <laughs> and Sam was standing in the bow of his drift boat with a sword drawn. <laughs> he should have been going down through there cutting fly lines. <laughs> and, and those guys were like, "What in the heck is happening?" <laughs> Turn these guys loose. A bunch of Wyoming registrations on boats, you know. They yeah, they knew that, that yeah, they, they knew we were we were like locals. Locals, yeah. That's well that part. You should have taped over that for the trip down the river. Then they couldn't have identified you. No, we wanted them to know that no. <laughs> we were not we were very happy with how many of them are on the water. Okay, I got you now. <laughs> and they're all guiding fishermen. And there's only there's only five of them allowed on that wildlife refuge, but there's probably fifty wow. that are actually guiding. So, but they you know they just buy them some dog food or something. They're not they're not exchanging money or, or nothing <laughs> legally. Who do they mind? Who's buying dog food? The client. Well, I just used that because I know I, we, I, we we get that with houndsmen all the time. That are that are illegally guiding lion hunters. They're not for hire. They're just swapping out dog. Food. Yeah, they're you know they don't. He didn't give him fifteen hundred bucks. He just he just bought him a bag of dog food. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So they're only allowed what five. Uh, guides in the whole place for a season or just at a time for a season wow five commercial five commercial operators on the refuge so the rest of them have to be lying about it basically and yeah you know, though yeah there's dozens of them that are lying uh, and they're uh, all and, and every damn one of them's from utah <laughs> are the guides from utah or they have to be from wyoming no they're all from utah Oh really? I you no. Know, I thought they had to be from that state. That's interesting no. too. No. Well, that's probably explained. So we lot. have real strict rules for for and boy, this we've gone down a squirrel path now. But um, we have real strict rules on hunting guides. They have to be licensed in Wyoming, etc. And uh, but not for fishing guides. Hmm. So anyway, I'll get I'll get off this squirrel. <laughs> no, well, we're gonna talk about fish today anyway, so it's not that well, big. yeah, but not not those kind of fish. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. We don't have no darters. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have two greensides and Johnny's, but oh well, that's cool. Okay, but not, out, not out here. I think the only small, you know, big winged kind of looking fish that we have out here are, are um, 
we've got a little sculpin called a Paiute sculpin. Sculpin. Sculpin is the one I couldn't think of last night to put in my list. So I don't have any sculpin pictures. I might have to look for them after I finish. I couldn't get, of course, I couldn't get all the fish. You know, there's at there's, least 315 different species in this state, probably more. And they find, they just found some new ones recently. Really? So find, yeah, not too long ago, they've got a new darter, which is probably a subspecies of something else. But it's a log perch, not a darter. It's a log perch. And I've got that. Well, you'll see it in a minute. And they just found that a couple of years, I think a couple of years ago, or maybe less than that. And uh, you see what Tina's saying? She says she can't count squirrels yet. She's hound wrangling. And then uh, Ian said that the official rules require us to start with squirrels. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ian, for keeping us on track. You know, Ian, I might put you up for a vote to be the <laughs> squire of this organization and uh, make you official. <laughs> You're going to get assigned a duty if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll be described as, uh, you know, duties <laughs> as assigned. Describe of the organization. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Saturday morning shine might need a scribe someday in my little <laughs> And I think Ian's got a good point. It should start and finish with squirrel <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh! And it's wow. officially opening day of elk season in the state, grand state of Wyoming. So, well, what? What about? Hopefully, my hopefully my son has meat on the ground already. Yeah, what time did they go out? Well, I'm. They were in camp. I'm sure. Oh, they, right. I'm they sure were. they're up on the mountain, like by four thirty or so. Yeah. So. How far into that? That's all there is here. Squirrels, Bruce said. <laughs> <laughs> Tina said, yes, he can be assistant squirrel counter. <laughs> all right, Ian, that's official. No duty, please. <laughs> and you, it's you as well as volunteered for that, my friend. <laughs> he, he, he messed up. <laughs> yeah. he, you obviously were never in the military. <laughs> never, 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 never volunteer. Never volunteer. <laughs> Even if you don't mean to volunteer, <laughs> I always love it in the movies when they ask for a volunteer and everybody steps backwards, but one guy. <laughs> Somehow, I bet that happens. <laughs> and then you get voluntold to go do some stuff. <laughs> yeah, voluntold. <laughs> That's what we called it too. Funny how words like that can get around. <laughs> <laughs> so that would make we have to be careful about this Dean it, the AS if you're the assistant squirrel scribe that would be ASS wouldn't it abbreviated <laughs> or not squire scribe I don't know what I was saying but I meant scribe <laughs> I have an authority complex military wouldn't have been good <laughs> I get that too. <laughs> an authority complex. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I'm not sure I've ever met an under a uh, uh, non com that didn't have some kind of authority complex. <laughs> hey, buddy, come on up. Well, our my co host, the other co host, has finally decided to join me. Actually, he was down here before and he left. What you doing? Did you get that settled? I'm, we managed to, Brenda was there helping me with flags, and Chloe came down, and she held her down finally, and we cut her nails because she chewing Brenda up. And, uh, after she got so, last couple of claws, she was really complaining, and he was laying here watching her in the chair, and his head was looking. He folded his paws under so I couldn't get to him. <laughs> And then he followed her out because she thought she was, you know, in distress, I guess. Well, that she needed, like, he was going to pile on. Well, that could be. <laughs> yeah, that could be. He don't like to have his done either. That's what happens with the dogs. They, they like, somebody, somebody has a, some kind of distressful moment. 
they all just come and pile on. It's not, I'm going to hear, I'm here to help you. <laughs> I'm here to cause you more. I'm pain. here to like add to your pain. You want to come over here and say hi? Come here. Oh, come here and say hi. Tell Tina's hounds hi. Say say hi to Buro Campbell. He ain't in here. Oh well, he's there. Though. He's causing my wife distress right now. I'm sure. Keeping her awake. <laughs> Yeah, she tried to go back and get some more rest. And I hear one dog barking. and <laughs> It probably means there's more than one up there. There's the little eight-pounder. She's in there yapping. Up down. Because that's what eight-pound dogs do is yap. They do. That's what, they're right. that's what they're for. Okay, I got to catch up with Chad here. Ian says he and his family walked around Hollywood Studios talking about alien swirling saucers, but we called it ASS. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ride at, at, at Disney or Disney World, I mean, <laughs> or the Toy Story area where they've got all the slinky dog roller coaster and that kind of stuff. The slinky dog roller coaster. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I've never seen it or been on it, but I've seen from, it. From Toy Story. Yes, yeah, from Toy Story. You've seen, Surely you saw Toy Story. Oh, many, many, many times. <laughs> That's what I thought. You had a daughter and you've got grandkids now. So. It's, one, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I kind of like it too. But Tina, Tina said it is, and you think they would have thought that through. <laughs> well... They can't I, do everything, I guess. You, yeah, you, yeah, she's talking about the ASS part, swirling saucers. <laughs> you gotta love a movie that's got early army in it, being the army man. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, <laughs> he he can't. He's no longer with us, is he? He's not, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't think so. And poor Hagrid died yesterday or this he week. He did. Yeah, Rob Robbie Coltrane. Oh no. He was in a lot. He was in, I think about him sometimes. He was in a lot of movies that I've watched. Yeah. You don't really know, hear about much. I mean, unless you read the credits after the movie or something. Well, that's too bad. That got it. He was in the Disney did a, well, probably more than one, but they did a Huck Finn version a few years back. It had uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, I think's his name. As Huck Finn and Robbie Coltrane was one of the sneaky salesmen that tried to. Yeah. Hey, hey there, Boudreaux Campbell. There's Boudreaux Campbell. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? He's just listen. hanging. He's just hanging with Dad. He's grown up. My God. He's about 30 pounds now. He's Some of his border collies kicked in. Plus, I'd probably feed him too much. <laughs> He's still run with the rest of them. Oh yeah, he's, he's funny. He's he's, he took off. <laughs> he and Hank took off after a big old moose the other day. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I hope you you hope you wrote that down because <laughs> that sounds was, like it'd be Hank, so Hank was right on that moose's backside running it and. And he was right behind him, them little legs just going. <laughs> <laughs> I guess his legs aren't that much longer than normal, I guess, for a dachshund. They're, he's probably, he's probably got, I don't know, seven inches of free board under him there. <laughs> 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 not much he doesn't not many, i don't think many people would describe <laughs> the tre uh, national treasure you know people don't talk like that much anymore but they think like it. <laughs> seven inches though that's that is probably a little taller than a dachshund so he's got some yeah, more yeah i mean he's a little he's a little taller than a purebred he, he's, and he doesn't look as long to me but i don't see him whole. he's pretty long He's, yeah, he, he's kind of awkward to pick up. <laughs> Plus, he's getting, like I said, he's probably 30 pounds now. 
Yeah. He's a growing boy. Yeah. Anyway. Ian said the moose. Ian went. said the moose. Yeah, the moose is winning a lot. Although the moose, the moose got to meet Mr. Rubber Buckshot um, two days ago. So. Yeah, that was an interesting story. Tell them how to avoid, tell them the one way you can avoid. I wouldn't have known except when referring to a dachshund. Tina said that uh, her dog, Danny, is bigger. He said he, but he's getting there. He said he's not as big as Danny, but he's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of her hounds. Hey, Mike Cabral, good to see you. And the please, Canadians are in the house. Canadians are in the house. I should have put the Canadian flag up today. Mike, if I'm not pronouncing your name right, would you please tell me? I, I always feel bad. I'm thinking maybe saying it wrong. And I'm not trying to insult. I'm, I'm trying not to insult you by asking you about it. Rubber buckshot. Sounds like. Oh, I guarantee it stings. <laughs> wonder, how that, wonder how that feels compared to rock salt. <laughs> I don't know. I shot her at 20 yards and it just pissed her off or excuse me i'm not allowed to say that word that's one of the seven deadly sins <laughs> Try to say them in words you can't say on tv it just aggravated her <laughs> and she pinned her ears and came charging at me and i so i waited till she was about five yards away and fired her up and she left the yard has she been back since and my local game warden shared with me the shotgun and the rubber buckshot. So that was that. that so this, that. This, <laughs> this is kind of like stage one because she keeps getting in the yard and keeps trying to kill us. <laughs> so, yeah, Mark and Mark and Shauna have had some uh, pretty serious run-ins with these moose this, this year. And I mean, uh, meese. We've had meese. We've got yep. at least four. Okay, good, Mike. I, did, I always wondered about that, and I thought I was, but Tina, what do you mean only seven? I, what did we say it was only seven? Seven inches for free oh, board. Oh, <laughs> free board. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we're, yeah, we're. Ian said that makes sense. At what we're we're most free board? this morning. Ian's got the next good question, because you and I have privately discussed this. Where that's stayed. Oh, that's seven it. deadly sins. I'm pretty sure there's more than that. I invented a couple of them. Oh, I thought we were talking about Boudreaux. <laughs> <laughs> we moved on. <laughs> <laughs> so Ian asked the question, at what point can you kill for self-defense? That's probably not actually a regulation for that, is there? Well, they can issue me a permit called a Chapter 56 permit to kill the thing if it just get you know, or they'll do it themselves and i say they they be in the department um, um that's like that would be our absolute last resort i i don't want i don't want that to happen i just i want them to stop getting in my yard and charging us every time we go outside yeah, you don't mind them being around as long as they're not in your I, I like having them around i just don't want her like to hurt one of us you know i've been, not I, everybody knows you i've know. had three broke ribs already from the darn thing so yeah mark got attacked what a few years ago by it's by been a decade now probably but yeah i the one caught me in the yard and broke my ribs so would you, I mean, in this case, it's mostly been doe problems or cow problems. I mean, would you, hey, well, Kate, we've, got, we've got about a 40 inch bull that keeps getting in the yard too. And he's the work, he's the, he would be the most deadly of them. Yeah. But he doesn't come as often here as the cows and calves do. So. Hi, Dave. Welcome in. I saw you in go, but we were in the middle of killing a moose, so we had to talk about that. Or not there. Kill. 
Buck there's, li- there's little that's as ugly as an old cow moose with her ears pinned back. Coming oh, out. I've, yeah. <laughs> I can, I've seen some, again, there's not much uglier than an old cow moose anyway, if you really think about it. <laughs> but when they pin their ears back, they get really ugly. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> and yeah, I, I've uh, said I I stood my ground yesterday or day before yesterday and whopped her. <laughs> are you saying she's ugly when she pins her ears back or she <laughs> broke your ribs? <laughs> Where's she at? <laughs> I'm going to ask her about this. And Mike probably has them. Mike probably has to deal with them too. Yeah, he probably does. In well, fact, I, I don't, think he mentioned I don't, that. I don't know how many. I don't know how many moose are in that part of Canada, but Ian, that's correct. There are more. I've probably I've read that in several places that I think are, def, uh, you know, yeah, way more than bears. But yeah, way more than bears. They they have a lot of moose moose incidents up there and like what happened to mark he was out doing something at night i don't check in the barn or something and he got between a cow and her and her calf and that cow kicked wore him out broke three ribs and what it did it break anything else she was no making, that was plenty let him have it that three ribs was enough <laughs> and you know she could have done a lot more damage they hooks. don't they don't kick you they with their back feet they they stand up on their back feet and they and whack so, with, their, yeah. with their front feet they, oh they just they're like a boxer they, they i mean they hit you hard quick and that's a pretty big animal to be honest they got, they, they got big old feet yeah <laughs> bigger big as a horse hoof and sharp too are they not yeah, uh, pretty, pretty yeah, sharp. pretty sharp. Like a deer's hoof, you know. Mike, like I said, we don't forget we're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna talk to Diana about this, so just keep that in mind. He ends like up like a box. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something else I wanted to comment. Oh, it was uh And you know uh, where we all learned about kangaroo boxing? Bugs Bunny. Looney Tunes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> And the box that always came in from Australia, it always had a it always had a box of kangaroo in it. We and we we uh, the source of all knowledge <laughs> when we were young. Anyway, that's probably what you know. That's probably what's wrong with the current generations. They it is. They don't learn about classical music or opera or anything anymore. No, they don't. They don't. I mean, that's why they don't grow up wanting to know what, you know, Wagner ne- is. They never hear about sirloin of beef or cirrhosis of liver. <laughs> exactly. Hiawatha. <laughs> uh, Kay, you're not late. You're never late. We're just, we were just talking here. We're, we're we're not, we haven't talked crazy. about anything of substance yet today. <laughs> we're going to that in a minute. I'm just kind of waiting to let people come in. <laughs> Mike says he can make fun of her today because she's at Air Force Conference for the cadets. That don't mean she won't find out. If you don't think I won't tell her, buddy, you're wrong. Because <laughs> I've yet to see a box of donuts come through my door. From Canada, anyway. They don't know about duck and rabbit wabbit season. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Ian. They don't. They don't know about they don't they've never seen Mrs. Duck. <laughs> Fiddler crab, it's fiddler crab season. <laughs> Brenda always just he hawed when the when Daffy would do something and his wife supposedly would slap his bill off. <laughs> and he'd be walking around with a round face, you know. Oh my word. <laughs> they probably can't sing Broomhilda or yeah, exactly. Barbara Seville. <laughs> yeah, the wabbit scene. Wabbit. <laughs> Wasquee Wabbit from Brooklyn, of all places. Oh, oh Brunhilde, you're so lovely. You're so. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I can't. Yes, I know it. I can't help it. 
<laughs> we used to know that song pretty good. I can still sing it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy. Oh, they God. They okay. don't know what you say. They don't okay. know. Okay. My ribs are hurting now. It's time to stop. <laughs> That's very true, Ian. I, t- <laughs> I was talking to somebody. I don't was it in here last week, and I'm... Uh, we talked about getting lost or going somewhere, and I said, "That's because nobody knows you have to turn left at Albuquerque." <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I miss those guys. Oh, you know, people this, know. This that segment is brought to you by Mickle Any. Tabasco sauce. <laughs> what was that? I said this segment is brought to you by <laughs> Mickelhenny Tabasco sauce. <laughs> That's to clarify. There's no uh, no money being received from any of these products. <laughs> Brenda said she wants to hear Broomhilda. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> Maybe, maybe when we're visiting. <laughs> oh my! Somebody, I was saying, I was. Somebody made me think of something. Oh, I was. T- kids Return don't know. Return my love. <laughs> you go for well, it, brother. Hilda, won't you return my love? <laughs> uh. Kids don't know they can order everything under the sun for Acme. Acme, whatever company. <laughs> You can get anvils, good big old anvils from them. <laughs> Damn, a pre warned me not to make fun of her this morning. In the car on the way, I told her across to my fingers, I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what, Mike? <laughs> You're wrong. You messed that up, buddy. <laughs> I can't say much. My wife, she's. I'm crippled now, so she can catch me and beat me with a stick. I'm crippled now, so I can be caught. Yeah, <laughs> she don't have she don't have any trouble catching me now and whopping me with a big stick. <laughs> oh, don't play that one, Paul. That one makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my phone doing crazy things? <laughs> and Kay's right. Amazon <laughs> is Acme. <laughs> well, that's good. Cr- <laughs> you probably get, you're probably right, and you know he ordered all that stuff. You can, and, I, and I'll guarantee you, you could buy an anvil from Amazon right now. Oh, I know you can. I've looked at them. <laughs> 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 they're mostly foreign made, but they're probably still... not. Probably not some TNT though. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not anymore. <laughs> or they wouldn't ship it to our location. Yeah, that'd be that's, it. That's what I always get. Like, sorry, you ordered this item. We can't ship it to your location. Yeah, well, they're always wanting, you know, we can't send it to your state or whatever. That, that right. Crap. But like, do you know where you live? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I can remember when dynamite was actually easy to get. I mean, we used to, we, when I worked for the department, we could go down to like the country general hardware store and buy it. Really? When you first when, started? When I was first, on, like the first five years I worked, we, we were making duck ponds and things. And yeah. You could just go down and buy you some TNT. <laughs> well, let me chase another squirrel since you brought that up. My buddy, and I will not mention his name. It, 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 it rhymes with Steve Cottrell. <laughs> buddy Cottrell. He told me some stories about that because they used dynamite to blow potholes too, just like yeah. we're talking about. And then in this big, what's now a prime, it actually, it's one of the premier wetland birding areas around here. It's called uh, Rankin Bottoms, and it's a big flat and it's shallow water. Kind of comes up and goes down at the right times of year, and, and shorebirds stop there. And pretty good numbers for around here, but that's year many many years ago. That's what they did. They get like a whole truck of dynamite to come down there on site. I don't how much they use. I'm wow. sure 
stick was good, two was better kind of thing. But they used to blow potholes and, and make water. And that, and that was something that got done all over the country by resource people. Yep. We were we were doing that a bunch over that in is, eastern Wyoming. One day one day he sent the truck out a little closer to the project and then it mired up to its axles. So they had to call somebody out to pull the dynamite truck out of the out of the mud. <laughs> Okay, let's well, say we deliver. Will it? Will it deliver in the? <laughs> will it deliver in the middle of the desert? I bet they would if you had an address. Ian. and and you know what? Wiley Coyote always had a mailbox, and he had a big. <laughs> I think he had a big mailbox, or at least he yeah. pulled stuff out that got big. Yeah. He... <laughs> what he said. In case that in they may, if they deliver to my area, they would deliver anywhere. <laughs> Mark says that too. You ought to see how they have to get to his house. Oh me. Okay. I guess I might as well we might as well do earn our keep today. Well, you know I mean? We might as well. I I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about fish today and I'm gonna give a um what do they say when you, I'm going to preemptively tell you that this is nowhere near the number of fish in Tennessee, but this is primarily, these are species that are found here or maybe only found here. And that's special. Well, I'll put the, I'll put the thing up and then tell you about it. You better have smallmouth bass in there. I wouldn't miss that. Okay. But, <laughs> but that's not only in Tennessee. No, it's not. But it's a pretty cool fish. Very cool fish. Where's the surf bum at? He's a, oh, he's, I don't know. He's probably out chasing golf balls again. Hopefully, he's fishing. He he's he is bad to chase golf balls. Okay, why is my slideshow? They just don't taste any good though when you get them caught. Uh, you can't cook them. I mean, they're not, they're just not cookable. Okay, I think I finally got my act together here. Why am I having so much trouble this morning? I did sleep last night. I don't know. You have to tell me. Okay, <laughs> now. Oh. <laughs> so Brenda said something to me yesterday and said the Pony Express isn't running anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's funny because they came right by my house. Uh, yeah, they did. I mean, one of the one of the branches came literally right through this valley. Right. All there. right. Well, yeah, then part of the, one of the Oregon Trail legs went right by you. Yep. Okay. I. On my front page here, it's pretty much normal, except this bear here wants to eat that fish. That fish in that guy's hand is one of the newly discovered species in Tennessee. And I'll tell you a little bit more about him in a minute. The, a darter that big is? No, that's a log perch. Oh, log perch. And that's that's now. No, it's, it's, still a per, it's still a perkity. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the, what they're calling it. Something. But it's the ten, they're going to name, that one's going to be, the, there's a lot of log perch in Tennessee or different places or several species. Closely related to darters. Yeah. And this one, they're gonna, it's new. They just found this out in the Harpeth River, Mark, out middle Tennessee. That's right. That's so have, cool. Hang on just a minute. How is a fish that big? go undiscovered for that long well, that's that's a, that's yeah cool. that's a very good question i've lost my screen hang on a minute i'm almost surprised that stream well, there's a really cool painting of a grizzly bear yeah that's a. Uh, I i think it's, it's like the charlie russell painting pretty sure it is all right hang on i'm i don't know why this didn't cut off because i think i killed Streamyard. I am still broadcasting, right? Yeah, I hear you. I don't. There's another cool Charlie Russell painting. Yeah, I've got 
I change those out every few days, or I try to. All right. Bear with me, guys. I apologize for this. I got my hand got got ahead of my brain, which is not all that unusual. Hey, I'm glad you were in here because if you hadn't have been, I'd probably cut it off and kill the stream right there. Well, Ian said you're still broadcasting. Well, now I'm done. You got, I see, just kind of stacked up. Yeah, well, that's never ending screens that go on and on and on forever. See, I must. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hang on. All right, Ian, am I still in there? Somewhere. Oh. Okay, so she's got three different addresses, and they still tell her she doesn't exist. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> That's not good, Kay. Oh, yeah, you ought to look. You ought to try to look up one buck lane, old pal, Wyoming. <laughs> it's on there. It's on, it's on Google, by God. I've seen it. <laughs> All right, hang on. I'm going to try this again. And there's still no promises. Ugh. Crap. Pardon me. All right. Can you see the can you see the bear and the fish now? I see you and I. Oh, and wait, that's I haven't it. shared it yet. Okay. There ain't, there no there's no nothing else. Now and now I see the bear and the fish. Okay, now I think I've got it right, guys. How did the coelacanth go that long without being discovered? Well, Brenda Pruitt, you would ask that question. We were just talking about coelacanths. Because it was in very deep water. It was in ocean. extremely deep water in the ocean. And they found it. And the natives there probably knew it always was there. They probably caught them, but they were down in the depths near. I don't know if they were between Africa and Madagascar, but they were somewhere off the coast of Madagascar, as I recall. Mark can correct me. And yeah, and they found, they found them all the way around Africa now. Oh, have they? Okay, I mean, they've, they've actually filmed them now um, in the depths, but they're, yeah, they're way deep. And that's why they escape detection. But this has got to be a little stream fish. Yes, this is a small stream. This and what that's what's so far still unique and special about Tennessee. Not the only place, but it is one of the places. Tennessee has the most diverse aquatics of any state in the union because we're just in the perfect place for water. And so far, temperature, and we got lots of running streams that are still clean because all that's that other thing. Most of these fish are extremely sensitive to pollution, and you find them in rocky substrate like you see there. And it may not be deep water at all. They like swift. Sometimes they like real swift moving water, and uh, but they're but and Tennessee has more than any other state according to the specs now. I, that's always subject to change. I'm sure somebody's out there trying. Okay. Yeah, I, know that, I know that Alabama and Mississippi and Arkansas all claim that title. And they do they? On, and Arkansas, I, I think we had to learn when I went to school there, I think we had to learn something like 275 species of fish. Well, here's and, the. And Tennessee had us, I mean, Tennessee was had more species than that even then well here's the book that we had to learn from yeah when i was in school and count, this man, this man count the, all those darn lateral line scales and this guy right here david etnauer was my teacher guy that wrote this book one of the guys and it is full of pictures of fish i think we used that book for a while and where days. they found these fish these dots well you can't see it probably but there's dots there that represent every fish where they found them right. not necessarily every fish probably a population which could be one to 20 or whatever but it is full and i'll be honest with you after a while to me they looked a lot alike 
But to some people, and Mark's a good example of this, you, you remembered them pretty, you were good at fish identification, as I recall. And learning. I, I did okay. I built a, I built, I, when I was at first starting school, I built, I went through the ichthyology course and then I built, after the course, I built a key to identify the sunfishes in Ohio. Mm. And when, you know, you got a sunfish that's like an inch long, just a young of the year kind of a fish, kind of how you could identify them. And I, I did that and they probably still use that key. Well, that's but, what I was getting ready to say. They probably do. Tina, I'm going to look for you on Google Earth. <laughs> she said she waved at it when it went by. She had a, a Google Earth car come by her house. I think it's been by Mark's, and I think that's amazing because Mark is, lives pretty damn remote. Tina said she did wave. She was putting the dogs out. <laughs> <laughs> we might get to see Danny on Google Earth. So she's on, she's on the street view or the... Yeah, they were going along taking pictures from street view cameras <laughs> on top of a car. I've they seen don't, her aerial they, shot. They don't, I don't have no street view at my house. There's not? No, you can look at the well, aerial yeah. view, but there's no street view. I thought there was a street view. Okay, I'll, I'll take your word for it. They're trespassing if they did. Well, you bet you'd be on the internet. Because <laughs> it ain't a public road. Here's an example of just some of the amazing little fishes that live in Tennessee. I can't remember what this upper right left one is. It's a, But it's a brood of, of uh, darters, I believe. And one of the pictures is probably the same picture. So like so cool. the male in there amongst them, but. Uh, you can see those. In the top right is a mass darter or blue mass darter. I think there's a black one too, like that. I think you can see how colorful they are. The uh, grub in, or the chub at the bottom, I think it's a spot fin chub, I think. And the blue one? Yeah, it wouldn't. I don't know if it would be that blue. I think that, that fish, I almost think somebody's colorized that one, but it showed up well. So. I'm not, I mean, I'm not sure. It could be the lens. It could be the water. I, I don't think they're that blue, but I may be totally wrong on that fish. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe I am wrong on that fish. And there, I mean, these fish are more colorful than just about every like, yeah. saltwater pet fish you could buy on the planet. And this last one in the lower left is a tangerine dart, which was always one of my favorites. I think those are really that's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And, and you're going to see some others. And people and don't, even, right, they they don't even realize they've got them. I mean, they're out no. in, the creek in the backyard and they don't even, un, they don't even realize they exist. And now the bad thing about that is now if people started collecting them for the aquarium trade and some people do have these fish in aquariums, I've seen them, but if they really got caught on and they probably would if people saw them, which I, you know, that's where you're. That's the catch twenty two of being in our business. You want to, you want to share the wildlife, but at the same time, you got to protect the wildlife. Yeah. And sometimes you got to make a choice. And, and uh, some of these fish are only found in one stream. And one, in fact, that's what right now. That's all they know about that Tennessee darter. It's one stream, one section of one stream in Middle Tennessee. Wow. Right, next slide. And these are, well, where did I, do? I must have taken, I had one of them slides that said, please subscribe or consider subscribing, hit the like button and leave a comment. So I'll say that now, please smash the like button and maybe subscribe if you aren't already and please leave a comment. It helps the, it helps the whatever, yeah. algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> it helps people find me, I guess. Persina Pina. Yeah, that. But there's more to it because that's I don't. That's not the whole name. Or ten, there's a tenacity in there somewhere, and uh, so it's know. a subspecies. I, yeah, I think it's a subspecies. I mean, that's what I finally figured out when they said it was. It was actually made quite a bit of news, and that's where a lot of these pictures came from. 
was it was in papers and a couple of magazines and it made the local news down there in Nashville. And I think up here too, because they are now trying to propagate this species. That's another word for breed and produce them. Um, <laughs> and well, um, it, it may not look like it folks, but all those fish biologists in that one picture are laughing hysterically inside. <laughs> oh yeah, I get they, all look, they all look like droopy, but I bet they're having a good time. <laughs> Let me see here. I'm missing. Why is Tina not showing up? Oh, I took the. Okay, they do Tina. How do they get there? It, is it evolution or is it? Um, I both in. I would say, um, like I said, Tennessee because of all the water. And the habitat and the varying habitats. I mean, you've got 6,000 feet here. I know that's nothing compared to Colorado or Wyoming or anywhere out there, but back here, that's high. The highest mountain in the east is, uh, you know, just across the state line here at Black Mountain. And uh, the next one is Clingman's Dome, and it's it's on the Tennessee side of the line. So they're, they straddle the line. So from there down, you get into the hill and valley area, which I live in now between ridges. Literally, if you look at maps, a topo map or a 3D map is the best way to see it. It literally, this area is just. Tina's on, you're on there, Tina. No, I see you, Tina. I hope I didn't hide you. If I did, I I see you now. Do you not see you? I can't see the Google, the uh, YouTube screen. Brenda, tell me if uh, he had, if you can't see Tina now. I, sh I think I just had my cursor on it and it made it gray out. Yeah, he didn't see you, Tina. You're good. I wouldn't do that to you, Tina, never. <laughs> trust, I, trust me, I wouldn't do that to you. So how they get there? But Well, anyway, going back to that. So I think there's a little bit of both, but certainly less than losing habitat is one of the biggest problems. That's the main concern with most of these fish is trying to keep them is to keep the habitat there, which involves not just keeping the streams clean, but often keeping development off the creeks, making sure they've got the proper amount of shade, cover, uh, you know, the right kind of food species within the water table, uh, just all kinds of things. And as they lose that, they get smaller and smaller. I've got a good, I've got an example of that here in just a minute of one that's really played a role in that kind of uh, situation. But these are all various species. This is all part of the same species, by the way. Uh, I believe I believe the bottom one is the female and the middle one is a uh, immature. I believe is how they had this laid out. I'd have to go back and read it. But uh, and the guys and I've got some more pictures of this. So if you don't know, this is how they do it. Um, what is what is Brenda now saying? I did. I nudged that algorithm. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> I don't know what Brenda's talking about. I guess the. Oh, I don't know. I got to catch. I'm going to catch up. I'm going to go back talking. One reason I put the picture on the right left while it's. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's a stage picture. They're they're out doing it, but I you know they probably had to be told to gather up so they could take a picture. That'd be my guess. And they're probably thinking, now we need to get back in the creek. Come on, let's get this over with. We got fish to find. And uh, we referred to most of these kind of guys as fish heads. You know, they were the fish heads and we weren't. And they kind of wore that name proudly. Fish uh, squeezers. <laughs> huh? Fish squeezers. Fish squeezers. I don't know, Mark, out there, did the fish biologists ever collect that, uh, doll heads? Uh, no. Somewhere I've never, back heard, I've never heard that one. Well, I don't know if it's just TVA or if the state does it too now, but somewhere back many, many moons ago, uh, probably in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, I, I don't even know when it started, maybe maybe later, but somebody found a, a doll head along a street bank. Of course, you know how you know stuff gets thrown in the rivers and creeks back <laughs> here. Or the hillside, and it ends up in the river. Right. But they, somebody found a doll's head laying on the bank, and they picked it up, and I and think set they it on their desk. Set it, uh, well, they set it on the boat first, and they brought it back and kept it. And after that, people, everybody that found the doll's head would throw it in the boat or send it to them. 
So they had a very, they could do a museum of, of lost doll heads. <laughs> I mean, they had so many doll heads, it wasn't funny. That's part of the reason I think they got called fish heads there. But anyway, well, so in this picture, what they're doing, the one guy's holding a net. And the guy beside him with the hat and the sunglasses on, he's carrying an electro backpack, a backpack electro shocker to help <laughs> creepy museum. Creepy. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of. I mean, you walk yeah. in the yeah. all that creepy. It is a little creepy. <laughs> and they had them everywhere in the in their areas. So anyway, they're collecting, and and that electro shocker. Usually, at, there's two poles or two ends to it. One's a cathode, one's an anode tube or diode, tube, whatever it is. And they, the current runs between them, and that current temporarily shocks fish and immobilizes them. And they'll float to the surface, and you can scoop them up in a net to study them. Uh, what I was going to say a minute ago, there's two labs. I read, and I don't know if I have a slide for this, but I read yesterday that. There's two labs in Tennessee, one here in Knoxville. Actually, they both may be near not here. That are trying to propagate these fish and and re put them out, you know, in streams and repopulate them because they do think, you know, it's one of those cases where they are pretty sure that uh, one they either uh, Ian, to go back to Ian's question for a minute. One they either got stuck during the evolutionary change because that does happen. And there's species all over the world that ended up only in one place, kind of like our antelope. And, in you know, for whatever reasons, boundaries, mountains, or rivers, pronghorn. Or, huh? or pronghorn. Or pronghorn, yeah. You know, they ended up stuck. So that's also a possibility. But I know they're going to turn some of these guys loose and see if they can bring a few more back. Okay. So, so do they think they were in different drainages prior? Um, I don't know if they know that. I'm not sure what the, all the reasons. That would be not a good thing. Well, that's true. I mean, that's a good point too, because you got to be careful introducing a strain species into an area. But they may have records from them being back further, and if they do, then they can move. They might move them around some. I'm not entirely sure what this whole story is. And here's another one. This is a top minnow. And I always kind of looked at these guys because they've got a flat head, <laughs> sort of a flat top of their head, and that's because they're top feeders. They pick bugs and mosquito larvae and stuff off the surface of the water. And this one happens to be, and that's a that's a male, and I think this is an immature male. It could be a female. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. But the green ones, the green one is all colored up for mating season, spawning season, basically. And the Tennessee Aquarium in Chattanooga is also working with these guys. This is listed, I think, it might be written here. Due to declining numbers and loss of critical habitat, the species was officially classified as endangered in 2019, and they're involved in a captive breeding program for reintroduction project to try to save it. Um, one of the reasons this fish is in so much trouble is pesticides. Pesticides yeah. in the water, killing all the insects that they need to eat, and uh, you know that kind of thing. Maybe even and, and laying their eggs in the right kind of vegetation. But I read something yesterday, and it, I may have, this is called the, by the way. This is the Baron's Top Minnow, and this is only in one place, one small area of the stream, probably even more. Well, they think this is the most endangered fish. In, the, in Tennessee, and maybe the whole South, maybe the United States, actually, because there's just one little spot where they, they're they still finding them. More than the snail darter. More than the snail darter, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. So here's how they get these little guys. They have to, uh, one, they scuba and, and dive with tanks if the water's deep enough. But you can see here, if you look closely, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's his foot. So he's sitting on the bottom and it's up to his armpit. So it's not very deep. So they just kind of float and pull themselves along and, and scan the bottom and try to scoop up some stuff as they see it. Now they do this for a couple of things. They may be looking for uh, food species or other predators like crawfish or 
mayfly larva or, or you know something like that but they're they do it that they do that and then this top one they're not carrying a backpack no actually that top right they're doing some testing methods that's more of a i believe that instrument that he's got in his hand is that i used to use one like that and it measures like dissolved oxygen in the water um even the temperature of the water it, it would check at least four or five things just depending on how sophisticated the unit is and another way they do it or did it was they take a net like you see in that lower corner and stretch it all the way across the string make sure the bottom's weighted down and in the in the at the bottom of the creek and then they'll walk in front of it and kick rocks basically just kind of shuffle their feet and all kinds of stuff will pop up, pop out, and go downstream with the, the uh, current of the river or creek. And they get them in the net, and then they, then they can count them. They can get them out and sample, see what's there. And that's how they, that's often how they find a lot of these fish species. Uh, same yeah. kind of things here. Uh, there's, most of this is electroshocking, and you, you can see these backpack shockers on several of these guys and i don't know about this model but these things can be kind of noisy because they usually got a little bricks and a stratton or something on the bottom of them and they're running a generator to I, think, I think those the ones in the bottom right there are probably co-felt we we couldn't use the little chindawa gasoline motors in a wilderness area we had to uh, use we had to use co-felt battery power. Oh, be. Yeah, I wondered about that. The upper one in the upper Most right. Those things would run. fire you up every time you used them. They, like when you hit the button to like shock, it would shock the user as often as it did the fish. Well, where was it getting you at? Through your, through your back. <laughs> oh, through the... It would be, right be like frying your spine oh man that's not good <laughs> no i i can remember especially if it was a little you know if, it, if the humidity was high or if it was lightly misting or something you'd just you'd get fired up wow well and i i put these pictures in there because these are all electro fishing or electroshock and you can kind of see how dip you're doing here's a two guys or two people uh, you know, one's holding a net, scoop net, and the other guy's trying to herd them into the net, basically, with the shocker. Although, yeah, she is downstream. I, mean, I start say she's in the wrong position. And then it can be something as wild as this line across the whole creek, trying to, again, trying to scoop as much as they can all the way across. And I can't tell for sure, but there's probably at least three or four. Over half shocker. a dozen of them there, maybe. And, uh, whoop. Oopsie. And this bottom in the corner is a kind of a dredge net, or it can be dragged through a column of water, and fish or whatever they're looking for bugs will get caught in the net and be pushed down into the bottom and be collected in these little jars and things at the bottom of the net. Or they can lay these down in the creek and with the current running through them and catch stuff also. And if it gets down all the way, then they're pretty much stuck in there. It's kind of like a, well, minnow trap. They can't get out and get in, but they can't get out. And I brought that. Now I'm just going to show some pretty darters. <laughs> this was called a lollipop darter. And I'll leave this up if you want to read what I've got in here about. I don't have no face. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I, that's the only picture I could find, a, a decent picture. They call them lollipop darters. Look along the spine here. The males will form these little I don't, balls on top of their spines. That's not the right word. And uh, that's another way they attract the female. Let's see here. It says they, I've read this, but I don't read it to get it right. Uh, this dart, for example, again, what I was saying earlier, this dart is restricted to a single <laughs> system in the Middle Tennessee River drainage area. Middle Tennessee River. There's not a. There's not a Middle Tennessee River. Uh, South Central Tennessee and northern part of Alabama. 
They live primarily in pools and riffles with slab rock and gravel substrate. Like other members of the subgenus Canotinus, I'm, I'm probably not saying that right, but this species spawns on the underside of flat rocks. And males of some species have round structures on the rays of their second dorsal fin that are hit hypothesized to serve as an egg mimic to attract females for spawning. As the common name suggests, these knobs on their second dorsal fin look like lollipops. And I may have another picture of this fish later on because I thought I swapped this one out, but maybe I was doing this late last night. I was putting this together. It took me longer than I thought. Camel. Which it always does. Anyway, those I always thought the lollipop darters were pretty cool. If there's any open affection, what do they call that? Ex displays of affection in that room, I will have to send out notes. We'll have to get a note to send home, buddy. Who? You. What? Oh, I thought I heard a kiss or a click. Maybe no, I was, I was coughing. I, oh, okay. I, I was coughing, and then I said, hello, Boudreaux Campbell. No. <laughs> Here's a good example of some pretty darters. You got a red line darter up in the corner. A holiday darter. I mean, look at that. And these are breeding colors. This is spawning coloration for males they tend to really get color plum fancy what they get plum fancy they get plum fancy and they're that's what i mean they're gorgeous and the females just stay drab <laughs> even, the, even the most drab darters like a johnny darter or something get pretty cool looking during during spawn yeah, yeah. Most of these guys pretty much go back to more cryptic colors and stuff when they're not in spawning season. That's a blue mask on the left bottom and then an ashy darter. This long one is an ashy darter. And uh, again, these are just found in various streams in the state. And so these fish are, most of these fish are less than five inches long. Oh they, yeah, they're, they're, they're about some, that big. Some of them are just a couple inches long but they're really closely related to walleye if you if you're a fisherman well yeah, yeah yellow, they're, in that yellow, fa they're in that family they're in the same family as walleye and sauger and yellow perch and things like that i can't remember if i heard somebody talking about fishing maybe you were telling me somebody put yellow perch in the lake near you or they were trying well, to we had we had a lake that had them and and now they're gone but oh, they're gone which okay. is too bad because they were they're good eating <laughs> yeah they are look so at that gotta... wow you know i just i'm just amazed at the colors on these fish they're they're it they're when i first saw them they just blew me away i told brenda one time she may or may not remember this but i told her one time that we needed to just get some of these fish to put in our tanks of course, yeah, they, some of them wouldn't live in tanks very well. We had uh, we had that. You remember that big? We had a five hundred gallon tank in Arkansas. Um, in the uh, hang in on the, just a minute. Hang on just hold that story. We got a discussion going on over here. Tina said, "Ouch!" And then Ian said, "Oh man, a shock and oh a shock in the back." And then <laughs> we said something about permission. Out lips and Tina said have the new guy do it <laughs> <laughs> and Ian said I think we filled out our lifetime permission slips <laughs> and, and, well I believe I believe Miss uh Miss uh Carol did mention something about you know an annual an annual permission pass or something <laughs> Okay, so anyway, we got a, we got a black darter here at the bottom, and as you can see, it's not very black. But in the bright times of year, it probably is. This is when it's colored up again for uh, for spawning. I Chris would call that an orange darter. Yeah, well, I might too, but there's already orange darters and stuff somewhere else. You know where Caney Fork is? This is a specific Caney Fork darter right here, or specific to that river. That's cool. And there's a lot more of them that are spotted up like that. And 
I mean, these Christmas darters and candy darters and like I said, they're just, they blew my, they just, my eyes popped out when I first started seeing them too. There's another, there's another lollipop and its head's not cut off. And that, my, I don't know, that's, a, well, that's a male. As far as I know, the females don't get the lollipops. And here's, here's that Tennessee darter. And I can't remember where that one's found. And here's a probably well, in Tennessee somewhere. Yeah, I believe they are in Tennessee somewhere. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> there, you hit another one of them words. <laughs> it's a, this is an adult show on Saturday morning. Well, I can't <laughs> say the kids are watching cartoons though, because that's not what kids do. They're not. They're not. They're not out there watching Looney Tunes right now. Yeah, they're not allowed to. I've got, they, I've, got, come to your house. <laughs> I've got a bunch of the collections and they've got all the like the old band ones even on them the <laughs> like the oily american with the last of the mohicans yeah. <laughs> and that moose that's <laughs> only about this tall but it's standing on a box <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> we gotta watch those someday together i can't <laughs> <laughs> Me smell no he can burn it. <laughs> okay, Mark, about the tank. Somebody said, What story did you start before I interrupted you? So I don't remember. What were we talking about? You had a five gallon tank somewhere. Oh, we had a five hundred gallon tank Perfect. there in Arkansas at the in the fish lab when I was at school there. And we had we had a system that we we put in the tank that made current. Yeah, we had some of those too at TV. And, and we had, I don't know, we had probably 15 species of darters living on the bottom. We we just made like a, you know, native fishes tank. And we had all kind of shiners and, and uh, darters and, and some, we had those, uh, those great big top minnows, uh, stud fish. I think we're yeah, called. Yeah, there's a stud fish. I didn't put yeah. that one in here. And we yeah. had put some floating vegetation and, and root wads and stuff so it could hop because they like to hide. Yeah. And um and we kept that thing going for years out there. It was Yeah, we had we had some spawning tanks and stuff at TVA and they they actually did some work with the uh, river sturgeon, which I've got a picture of here in a minute. And uh and some of those tanks were used for those fish. You know, mo and that's the thing about most of these fish that I'm showing you today. Mo almost all of them, except the top minnows, but most of these darters and perch, or the dart, well, the darters and log perch and things like that, most of them pretty much hug the bottom of the stream. They hang around the, the in the gravel and the big, some, some of them like fine gravel, some of them like bigger rocks. And there's some, some animals, some fish that make, gravel beds for themselves i'll show you that in a minute too and um and i wanted you to see this mark if you hadn't already i think we all found amazon prime during covid in <laughs> i can remember people <laughs> on the disney channel talking about how far how much money they were spending on things like uh funko pops and and pins and all that kind of stuff And of course, and I didn't say it, but the tangerine darter down there in the lower left—that's a—that's a, just a beautiful fish. And that's a pretty, well, it's misleading. That looks like a pretty good size one, which would still only be a few inches long. Um, and again, it could be a, a two-incher that just looks huge because of the camera. I can't remember, but it seems like those guys are a little bigger. All right, where's the button? there and i got just a few i think this is the last bunch of darters and again this isn't all the darters in tennessee and this is just a kind of a brief example you got a snub nose and you look at him he does he's got a snub nose a sickle darter which i believe this one's fairly rare back here but if you look at it real close uh I, it, it's a little different 
and the, how it's the body shaped and it's got the fins laid down real close to it more so than the others seem to and i don't know if, if the shape of those fins is how it got its name or not um and then we got the the, the tennessee or the not the tennessee the snail darter in the lower left if any of you have ever heard about the snail darter raise your hand both of the hosts of the show will get electric shots <laughs> of the backside when they say colorful words. <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. That's what you were doing down here in my seat a while ago. That's <laughs> the cattle prod. Thank you. <laughs> Ian said he'd watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you all, Ian. <laughs> so what's the status now of the snail darter? Well, I think I've got another picture of it, but the snail darter... Uh, and if I do, I don't might, think you do. Maybe I oh, don't. There it is. The status of the stale snail darter now is much better than it was in the seventies and the eighties, where when yeah. it was when they were when it temporarily stopped the Teleco Dam. But at that time, and this is legit because I knew I know the people who found it. I've met them. At that time, this was. The tennis, Little Tennessee River in a certain section was the only place they had ever found in all of Tennessee. Right. After sampling it for, you know, 50 years, it was the only place they had found a snail darter. And, you know, they tried to get, and there was a lot of, it, probably, if you, it was, this made national news, because I think I was in Florida when this was going on, maybe, which was mid-70s. And, um, but it was a big deal up here, of course. And you kind of had two sides. You had a snail darter side and you had a dam side. D-A-M. And uh, don't get any point. Don't shock me for that. <laughs> so I just got a shock, Brenda said. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> They were building the dam, and and the bad part about this this dam was it probably wasn't as necessary to build as it was made out to be. As they let on <laughs> in this particular case, and we probably could have done without it. And it really tore a lot of people up because the Little Tennessee River through there was some of the best smallmouth fishing and stuff in the whole part of this part of the country and it was it was very diverse as far as fishes go and uh, at the last moment they actually got it stopped and there was a group of senators unfortunately left by led by someone in this state who backed the agency on this one and we got, we know we knew them as the God Squad, and somehow or another they they had the final decision. So they, by God, closed the gates, and there she went. And I mean that that area now is is still very nice, and the upper part of the stream still exists. Um, but it was a shame that it got shut down because it it was really a quite spectacular river section. It was it was a big river for canoeing and paddling but it was really known for its fish fish species and like i said smallmouth bass fishing was one of the things it was really known for and that little guy right there stopped that dam for several years actually <laughs> yes she did tina because i said something she thought was inappropriate and I told her to stop. <laughs> All he said was damn, and it was the kind that blocks water. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to get it. Yeah, yeah, it was that kind of damn, damn it. <laughs> it, was a, it was quite the big deal back then. I remember the battle. It was. Yeah, yeah. you lived there then. And we lit, and we lost. Yeah, we lost. I knew a bunch of people that were... Which is how those things usually go. Yeah. I knew some I knew some biologists, fish ichthyology people, ichthyologists who were involved in that that were really kind of 
hard pressed. Some of them worked for TVA, in fact, and they were hard pressed to not support the darter in this case. Now, to continue that story, though, they they were really these fish don't survive in deep water, and they don't like a lake reservoir situation. They just would have disappeared in that area. They they were able to capture butts, do some captive breeding, and turn them loose in other streams. So now they, I, as far as I know, from that captive release program, they have found them in several other rivers in the area. Again, you got that you got that right or wrong concept of if they weren't there before, you shouldn't put them there. Issue, but they there's some of them now in like uh, the French lower French Broad. Where it's, where it's riverine and uh, of course and and then I think there might be some in the Holston uh, but they, they've now got a few around in different parts of the state so they're not gone but as far as I know that they're wiped out where they were originally and there's another fish that, that was at that time was the only place they'd ever found it I think actually after a lot of time I think they found some natural populations in a few more streams remotely, but it wasn't, it still wasn't common. And there is another picture of a spot fin chub, two of them. I don't, that still looks too blue to me. They gotta be that color though. Why would they have done that? Yeah, that's, I couldn't figure that out, but I don't remember being that blue. And we got a Tennessee dace over here on the side. Dace are another species tell me tell me if i'm wrong i don't think they're top minnows exactly they're more like mid water column fish yeah they're and closer to the bottom but we have a couple species of them out here too yeah. but not not near as pretty as those two but um we have de that's kind of our <laughs> kind of you know yeah Did, Brenda, are you shocking teddy too <laughs> He just jumped up. <laughs> Let me see what's going on over here in the. Who comes up with the names? <laughs> I'd like to talk about the damn store and the damn road up here. <laughs> well, that gets used a lot. Tina says, "Me too." And and the, and the damn car and the damn politicians <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen those around here. Here, Tina. Oh, you're lucky, in <laughs> Tim, who comes up with these names? Okay, well, that's a good question, Tina. Um, most of the time, if it's a new species, the finder gets to name it. Or it's named for that person. And, and if you look through the books, I can find a bunch of the things that if you track them back, they are named for those people. The Tennessee dart or the that Tennessee log perch that's new. I for some reason I'm thinking it was gonna somewhere in there it was supposed to have and they had something to do with uh I thought it might be Etnauer, although I mean he's way retired, but um it was anyway, it's gonna have the name of somebody. So now, if you're a student and you find something, <laughs> what, did I do? what did I do? <laughs> What's going on now? I just got zapped. <laughs> <laughs> what, Mark? What's just sitting what, there? What did I do? <laughs> I'm gonna come up here and take that button away from you. <laughs> just remind. Ow, me. Damn it! <laughs> Stop it! Gonna crank, I think she's cranking the voltage up. <laughs> so anyway, a lot of times that's how they get named. I mean, they, they fit into a family. They'll fit into a, a, a species type and a... Um, I can't even think of the word. Uh, genera or... Say that word for me. Species and... Genera? Yeah, genera. That didn't sound right in my head. So the, so there's, and the deal is, is there's two different names. So every one of these has a 
quote yeah. unquote common name, which is what we're reading on this screen. And I did that because they're much easier to read. And then, and uh, then there's scientific names, which are their actual name, but nobody can. Yeah, pronounce Janice, them. Janice, that's right, Tina. Thank you. Nobody can pronounce them. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't pronounce them. That's one reason I didn't put them in here. I mean, it's like Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's it. That's an actual scientific name for that big vermin. Yeah, but um, you learn to say that when you're a kid, and you can <laughs> just say that one. Yeah, and it, you know, if you, I don't know what the Tennessee Dace, and and, and Dace is a word that I've always like. Well, where'd that come from? Yeah, I don't know where that came from. And, Let me see if I can find the Tennessee days. I mean, I'll read you this. Try to read the scientific. Thing. These are all the. These are all in the minnow family, so they're in a genus called Cyprinus, I think. Um, yeah, I told the, you you can remember the spot fin. The spot fin chubs are. I mean, they call these kind of really thick. Uh, minnows they're large minnows that are pretty thick bodied and they, that's where they got the kind of the common name for chubs because there's a bunch of them but i don't know what dace means where it came from where why they chose that word yeah i don't either i guess i could look up that word and see where it came from if someone hasn't done that, look, look that up, scribe. It's probably from the old Hebrew or something. Yeah, I mean, it could very well be. Mean and little, like, colorful minnow fish in the stream <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that not one bit. Well, it usually is something like that when you can decipher it. And yeah. dart darters are darters because they dart they do they like <laughs> when they they look they lay on the bottom and they got great big pectoral fins and when they want to move they move really fast really quick but not very far but not very far yeah and that's probably how they got that i mean that's serious that may very well be how they got the name like if Don't you cry. wanted to catch one for bait you're going to be working pretty hard <laughs> And I have to get into the, here's something, let me see what this is. Well, here's a dace, a black-nosed dace, or some of the, uh, wait a minute, that might be a dark, I don't know if they have one here, it's a dahlia pectoralis, that's, that's, that's a darter, isn't it? I think those are darters, but that's just part of the, even that's just part of the scientific thing. I mean, usually they're about as long as my leg. And yeah, and I, I I'd really had trouble spelling them and remembering them all because there's just so many. And fish <laughs> guys, class, you don't get to use the common names. If fish right guys are worse than bird guys or mammal guys. Oh about, yes, about splitting and splitting and splitting, and you got that now. This is its own species, and they're 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 more prone to changing things than any of the sciences that i was associated with a lot of the a lot of the fish that i learned are no longer that fish <laughs> so. guinness ian said you're trying to say guinness <laughs> no but it's about time for a guinness i think ian it's noon somewhere even if i haven't been there i used to work with a guy that said it's noon somewhere and i've been there he was in the Navy and went all the way across the ocean. So he was, it's he figured he'd been it's to that noon. time. <laughs> it's noon somewhere. It's noon somewhere, he said. <laughs> all right. So anyway, that's, that's the same. Uh, probably not the, I mean, the story to have all these things really happen is probably too long to even tell. And I couldn't find a lot of good pictures of these guys. I, I did. I guess if I'd looked longer, but these are that's because they're this big. <laughs> yeah, these are little big catfish, <laughs> and they're called mad toms. And we've got them here. There's a smoky mad tom. There's a yellowfin mad tom, and then I know there's like a Tom Bigby mad tom down in Alabama, Tennessee area in the state line. There's just and there's quite a few of these around there too, but they're still. 
they're kind of a, I think they're a bit of an indica indicator species in that, you know, they're not, there's some of them getting pretty scarce. Well, they, that, I like my, these my first scientific publication was on the Washita Mad Tom. Yours was? Yeah, it was Tim Patton and I wrote it. Oh, you okay. Yeah, well, I knew Tim Patton was. I didn't know you were help doing that too. I yeah. knew you worked with him. We wrote we wrote one of the first papers ever on that species. So well Ian just got zapped for drinking Guinness. <laughs> no <And> drink. Tina's <laughs> Tom. Tina's wanting to know who is Tom. It's mad, I guess. <laughs> Mad Tom. He was mad about something. He was mad about something. I think these guys are cool. I'm, these are river chubs, and they're also called stone rollers. And actually, the uh, snail darter uh, had had used stones for things. I think they help. It seems to me like snail darters used the used rocks or small stones to help them. They actually ate snails. And that where, that's part of where its name came from. And they used them to crush the snail shells, I believe, if I remember right. That's been a while. But these guys, we when I grew up, we called these guys horny heads, and you can see why. And I remember many years ago, people used to fish for these. I guess they're supposed to be good to eat. They're not very big. I don't know what the biggest chub like this got to be or gets to be. They get to be about if are they a foot long? Or there's, so? two, there's two different critters we're talking about here because, like, a horny head chub is an actual species. Well, okay, um, and it's a which I think that top picture is one, yeah. And I they get to be about 14 inches long, and they're really bony, but they're good eating. But the the there's also a central stone roller, which is not a chub at all. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. And anyway, I, I'm. But these chubs, yeah, like they move rock. They move rocks around a lot. <laughs> don't worry, Tina. I don't think drink. I don't think she'll shock us for drinking coffee. Ah, damn it. But look at that pile that, that over time these fish have piled up in that stream or that wherever that's at. So are they nesting in that pile? Yeah, yeah, they do that. They these guys will nest and they'll build a pile of rocks and then nest it, spawn over it. Yeah, and which is another reason why they have to have you know clean, clear water with that kind of substrate. So if the Corps of Engineers is going in there and straightening out this creek and turning it into a ditch for whatever reason they do that they would probably wouldn't in this area but if they did then this all goes away and becomes a mud bottom or something and the fish go away right and you can see this guy in the lower left corner here that and those i believe those are reddish looking ones or maybe his young i say he because a lot of times the males are doing this nest stuff and you can see he's got a rock in his mouth Big, great, big old rock. Great. Well, yeah, compared to the fish, it is. And you wouldn't think a fish could carry that unless he was swimming head down or something. But they do. And get that off my screen. And now we're going to get into some of the native oh, look, sport. Look fish. at that beauty. We got the small mouth. We got a large right. mouth. That's God's own fish right there. Yeah, right here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are great fun. Great fun on a fly rod or any rod, but great fun on a fly rod. This catfish down here is big blue cat or channel. I think it's a blue bead tail. I think it's a blue. And what I read about this was they think this might be a state record or it was at that time. I don't know if it was. I didn't follow it up but it's not been it was recently caught and of course on the bottom right here i've got another picture of this this is probably if you live in east tennessee or maybe all of tennessee or in the south the crappie is one of the more fa most famous fish around because people love crappie it's got a very fine white 
lightly flavored meat and it's just really good. It's the only fit Brenda claims this is the only fish she likes to eat. And here's a couple of examples. We've got black crappie down here and white crappie. And as far as I know, they're both native here. Um yeah, they are anything knows different, but uh they're and native. This, and I love this guy at the top. This had a sub this had a caption under this picture. It said a musk muskie with a southern accent. Because people don't realize that musky actually are native down this far, at least in the upper parts of Tennessee, like the upper half, um, and maybe not quite half. But we have them around here. We actually have some. We had them. They were in the Nolichucky River. And we really? Never, yeah, but I never caught one. I mean, I never, but they were. It, and then it was a native fish there. Um. Mountain Hill Lake and below Mountain Hill has them. They've caught a few dandies in there. Look Just, at that. Look at that pumpkin seed. Yeah, isn't that nice? I, that's why I put that in there. That's, that's for you and me there. <laughs> We've got Mark and I've caught a bunch of those. That's a beautiful fish. Yeah, that one, if you could, if the light was on it a little bit different, it'd be even brighter colored. Some of those guys are just brilliant. And well, oh, uh, another one of my favorite fishes right here. <laughs> we called them red eye. I think technically they're a rock bass. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell this guy's been kind of busy. Look at his tail. It's kind of chewed up or beat up. He's, I think they fan the nest or something and do that, I believe. Or it could be from scrapping. This is pound for pound, which I've never caught one that, that big. These are one of the fightingest fish I've ever caught. Some people call them warm mouth. Like I said I grew up calling them red eyes. But there's a, there, a warm mouth is actually a separate yeah, species. It is, but I've still heard people call these things. Yeah, like yeah. Warm yeah, it's a separate species. It's very similar. I, I started to put a picture of a warm mouth in here, but I don't here, know. They've got, got a, they've got a larger mouth overall, but they... Really? They're yeah, both of them. You know, we'd catch them in the same pools there in tennis and on the Noel Chucky. And these bottom two pictures are both actually of uh, brook trout, which were the only native trout to Tennessee. So I just looked over here in this damn chart, which I thought was all native species, but it's not. It's got rainbow trout and and well, that's brook trout. And that's the only ones I see. But rainbow trout have been stocked in rivers and streams in Tennessee for years. And they've been working with that to try to make sure there's room for the native rain, uh, rain, uh, uh, the native brook trout and help bring them back in places. They don't get huge. But back in the day when there was more of them and people did eat them, they said those small ones were just great. They would just clean them, throw them in a pan, fins and all, and just eat the, I have a friend that he liked to eat the fins. They'd catch them and cook them by the creek, and he said the fins would just be crunchy like potato chips. But anyway, that's a chart that you can get online or somebody's coming to Tennessee. If, all, you know, if they're just interested in in fishing, there's a, there's a that's a good chart to go by. The only thing I don't see on there, let's see. You know, there's a striper, or what some people right here call a rockfish. I don't see a hot, yeah, well, no, that's there's a white, white bass. bass. I don't see a hybrid on there. I'm surprised. Maybe it don't count for nothing when you come to trophies. <laughs> there's sauger, though. That's sauger and walleye are two of my favorite fishes. And I don't see a walleye on there. What the hell? They're not, I don't think they're native to Tennessee. Oh, no, they are. They are. They were river run fish. They were native in a couple, several of the rivers here. And there's one place on the, on the Clinch River where they, sometimes they still run a little bit. The Wall Iron Sauger.
I'll have to double check myself, but I'm pretty sure there was some riverine walleye in this state. I'll have to look at that. I'm gonna look right now. There's a there's a beautiful drum. Yeah, a, a grunter. <laughs> Most people, I didn't even know we had drum in this state till well, we, five years ago. Danny Kent and I used to catch them down at Douglas all the time. We, if we couldn't catch anything else, at least we could catch drum. See, they brought they brought northern walleye down here to try to restock the reservoirs because these river riverine walleye. Yeah, we have walleye here. I don't have to, I could go in here and read it. I, it's, I think it's in this book, but could be wrong. But the big, there's a record, there's a world record walleye that they, that they caught here right after they dammed up the lakes. Yeah. That was one of the native riverine walleye. This was long before stocking. And it was, it's, it's a state record or was, I don't know if it was a world record or not, but it was big. And they think that, what happened? Why is Brenda giggling? Brenda says she can see her flask. He said, you don't know what's in my car. I've been missing something good over here. I like to call him crappy. <laughs> I'm assuming that's how you meant that to be pronounced, Ian. A lot, and people around here call him crappy. Yeah, there's too. a lot of people call him yeah. crappy. The guy on the which oh and I missed that picture I guess I'm going on by that yeah they are similar to a pike in or a, who said that Tina they are similar I think they are related in some level in the genus species or something but the the uh, yeah, oh. they're for, they're first. But anyway, we did have river. Don't that we? I've always heard we're caught. Like people look at them as riverine or river walleye, and they actually did run upstream. And the, that first one the, in early years of the reservoirs, they brought the north. At some point, they brought the northern walleye down here because they thought they would do better in deep water, and uh, and they and they have. I mean, they're still here. They think most of the riverine ones are gone, but ever, sometimes they do run. I believe it's, you remember going up when we used to go across the mountain there to Friendship Squirrel, and we'd go run along a section, we'd be in the mountains, and we'd run along a section of the Powell River, and it was just shoal steps up all the way up through there. People lined that area at that time of year to catch both white bass and, and walleye, and because the, they run into that part of the, the river. At the right, if you're there at the right time, it only lasts a couple of days or a few days. But man, people look for it; they hang out there. But the brook trout is is one of the, is a beautiful little fish too. I mean, they're just gorgeous. I put that one in with in the guy's hand to show the size of a lot of them, because a lot of times these guys will be in much smaller streams, and the concern with the with the rainbow trout being in the same streams is it might outcompete them, but they're finding, or at least they were, I don't know if this is still true. They were doing a lot of studies, and they were finding that above a certain altitude, the brookies dominated, and there weren't rainbows. And uh, and for the record, rain, for Tennessee, the rainbow is an exotic. It's a western fish. I guess technically a western coastal fish. So it's funny because they brought brook trout out here. Yeah. And they get to be about 10 pounds out here. That's in your lakes? They just, well, yeah. mostly mostly in small lakes, private, do up north, private kind of private lakes and things. And they get, they over in eastern Wyoming in particular, they get enormous. And they, you know, in, in Tennessee and in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, they get about eight inches long. And I don't, I don't know what we've got. I don't know the discussion that's going on now. <laughs> They're just talking. 
Brenda oh, yeah. said, what the hell, what the hell? That That's actually, a, that's from a, like a TikTok video that we've seen of a small child who has picked up some language from probably his, their father. <laughs> and it's sitting there doing something. It's like, you know, it's a kid that looks like he or she probably just learned to walk. And they're walking back and forth, like between their tricycle and their toy box or something. And she's just sitting there saying, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> What the hell? Kind of reminds me of a guy. I knew a guy that had a daughter that said son of a bitch one time. I know a guy that has a daughter that said way worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> and caused and caused my mother to blush. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I current, I know a guy right now that has some granddaughters that they actually say the word and say, "Is this one of the words I'm not allowed to say?" A <laughs> uh, fire truck. Am I not supposed to say that? Am I not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, Mom, can I say whatever? <laughs> yeah, brookies get big if they're in the right place, and they get big up north. And they're, I've seen big ones out of lakes up there in, in some of the streams, but down here they don't get very big. Uh, I mean, yeah, they the get bigger than one in that guy's hand, but a lot of them up here are about that size. Yeah, all the Appalachian like brookies are little. Do what now? I said all the all the brookies in Appalachia are little. Yeah. And they do think there's a actually they do think there's a one or the other is a it's a subspe a southern subspecies, basically. And so, you know, there is a little bit again, if you throw them in a blender, somebody can tell you which one's which, but I, I couldn't. Not not at some stage, maybe when they got bigger. Hey, Dave, welcome back. I thought you were in here already. Anyway, let's move on to the next page. And here I thought I'd show you some odd things that are in Tennessee. And I don't know why. I, I don't know what's going on. I it's see a freshwater jellyfish. Tennessee has freshwater jellies. No. Yeah, a little. That one looks big, but usually they're real small. And I've seen them in, in the water column at night when we were out looking for stuff like that in school or working. Um, do you remember, well, I know you know what duckweed is. Yeah. Do you remember on Stones River, there was a, like down there below that pipe when we used to get down near the lake. Yeah. There was a bunch of duckweed in there. And I took my brother down there one time and we went fishing. And we were fishing out of a rubber boat I had, blow it inflatable. And he was dangling his legs in the water. And we got home and he had little red spots all over his legs. And uh, kind of like mosquitoes, they didn't bother me. But they were all over his legs. So they sting too. Yeah, they can sting. And that went, and I learned, I looked it up and I learned that duckweed is one of their favorite habitats because they, they get up in the duckweed and feed or whatever they do. But they're, as far as I know, they are a native fish. That's cool. Native native invertebrate of some form. Yes. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the only one anywhere, and I guess the only one like that. I'd, I'd have to look them up more, but I have seen them myself and read about them. They're not, they're not an exotic to my, there may be an exotic, but they are a native fish. No, they're not a fish. <laughs> well, no, I get, they're not technically a fish, but they are in the water. Brenda, Brenda's all right. She's warning people when they come in the room about getting the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's not done anything. Dave just got here. And then a couple that, of the uh, other kind of weird fishes that we have here are. Golly, I'd like to see. I, I mean, maybe that's what gave you the ground itch or whatever when you were in the creek. Gave you the what? The ground itch. The ground itch. <laughs> oh, the 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 bug, the jellyfish. Yeah, maybe it wasn't the grass that was giving you that. Maybe it was. Yeah, the, it was. The, yeah, yeah, it was the. Well, yeah, maybe. 
That's wild. I'd you'd have thought we'd have seen one of them. Well, you would have thought we would later on in life. Like I said, I just I found out about them, and I believe I think I found some down there in that duckweed. They they like to hang out in that duckweed. Yeah. Well, you know, duckweed's got little tentacles that hang yeah, down. Yeah, like little right. aerial roots or yeah. aquatic roots or. Anyway, so this is this is our sturgeon. I want, I'm, this is a river sturgeon or some variation. I can't remember exactly. There's about three kinds. This paddlefish, though, I've always thought was amazing. These guys get pretty big. And where yeah. they are, and the places they are located in Tennessee, they regulate the fishing for them pretty strongly because they're they're getting scarce. Yeah, and, no, we have them. We have paddlefish in most of the big rivers out here. Yeah, well, you get and you and, have sturgeon that get. Well, we don't have any sturgeon. We've got. We might have a small species up in northern Wyoming, but we've got paddlefish. But Idaho, and they're been. heavily, they're heavily regulated for yeah. fishing. Um, I guess they're good to eat, but they what they do down here is they snag fish them. Basically, yeah. they'll get they get below they'll get below a dam sometimes here, and when the dam's running, it's stirring up the water column and probably stirring up the bottom. And these guys are just kind of like big giant filter feeders. Right. They sort of remind me of the, the whale shark of the, of a, of the rivers. And, right. And so that's how they're eating. So they'll, they'll run, they'll be around that area where it's stirred up so they can get that food. And what I've been told is guys will throw out like a, a treble hook or a spinner bait of some kind. And, and I don't think they bite it. I think they get hooked. Yeah. They snag them and they and bring them in and you're only allowed one or two. Uh, they're really regulated. Yeah, they like Missouri. I think they've got you know they're. I mean, they're real heavily regulated. Like I said, on almost every state, you like, if you go to Missouri, you can fish for them, but you're allowed like two a year. You got to get tat. You know, they're very heavily regulated. And then I, I think sturgeons probably as well that. Um, Montana's got sturgeons and Idaho's got sturgeons. Yeah. Well, the what? What's the river? Uh, Snake River is famous for giant sturgeon. If I'm not yeah, mistaken. yeah, lower, way lower down. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because it, it starts the snake starts in Wyoming, but it's a little trout stream up here. Right. Yeah, well, I realize that. Of course, it's good to tell other people that because I didn't say it, and they they might not know that. And maybe the little bitty hype. Here's an interesting story about that. Um, because they've suffered here due to due to impoundments and and that kind of thing. They TVA and some other people were fish. I knew I worked with a fisheries guy who worked with these things for years, and was out there when they made like the first major release of these guys in a, I think they were in the Clinch river and they did it in several rivers, but Clinch was one of them down below uh, North dam. And they released a bunch of these guys in about foot, about a foot long, the river ones it just says sturgeon over here. They released a bunch of those. And, and I don't know how they, I haven't talked to anybody lately and see how they're doing, but they were, they thought they were doing pretty good. I was trying to find if, if he had jellyfish listed in here at all. He probably doesn't since they're not technically a fish. But they're I'm not talking. even a vertebrate. No, no, they're, they're not even. <laughs> they're not even the real thing. They're not vertebrates. They're like ghosts. <laughs> No. That's that's the fishes of Tennessee. That book is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're not going to be in heavy, too. And that link is for something just for Ian. So, Ian, I hope you can grab a cup of coffee, brother. Sit down. 
scooch up real close to your phone or whatever you're watching on, because I've got a video for you. <laughs> Just in a minute, I'll run it. And here's four of my favorite fishers, fisher people. <laughs> And great blue hair and an osprey, a goat, a bald eagle, and a and a little green that's sitting there ready to poke something. And shy eagle. poke. <laughs> shy, yeah, that's what some people call them. I call them that a lot when I see them out. out. I, what is that sitting on? A rock. or a, Actually, it looks like a log that's kind of humped up. It looks out of like water. another bird looking the other way. Well, it's a reflection of that bird. That's a really good picture. And it's very, it's very sharp. The eye, the eye of that bird, the feathers at least right through here look really sharp to me. This eagle evidently missed his fish or dropped it. I've often wondered just how damaged a fish is if they miss them, because that fish obviously got picked up out of the water. And I those talons are. I bet it hurts. I bet it does too, because those talons are really strong. When and we sure. lived in Montana, we used to walk, go to the Flathead River and watch the ospreys fish on Christmas Day. <laughs> That's a cool tradition. And um, the bald eagles would be in there stealing their fish. They, yeah, they'll do that too. Bald they, eagles aren't nearly as regal as we like to think. They would come down and pound that osprey and then they'd catch the fish before it hit the water. It was pretty cool. It says, I bet that sends a shot down their back. <laughs> I bet it does. And here's a big river sturgeon. This was an 80 pounder caught by a nine year old kid in Old Hickory Lake, which is down around Nashville. You might remember Old Hickory. We didn't use the That's, go that's cool. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big fish that kid's carrying. <laughs> that kid ain't near as big as that, I'll bet. No, I bet he don't weigh 80 pounds. He don't look like it. <laughs> but that, I don't know if that's the biggest one they've caught, but it's certainly one of the biggest ones caught by a kid. <laughs> that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. That, that was a neat, and that's the end. But don't go away, folks, because I have a special showing. Just for Ian. Ian, I hope you can watch, buddy. Bet that's it. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's. This is a government watching. training video. <laughs> oh, it's close. It's about stocking sturgeon. Oh. Uh, I'm have to, can, what does that do if I have my, that bother it? Is it what? When, when I have my volume on so I can listen to it, does that mess up the echo or anything? No, but we can't hear it at all. Oh, you guys don't have volume on it? We did, and then you did something. And oh, well, I was messing with way. it. Right, right now I've got, tell me if you can hear it now. No. Let me try it again. No. Now? No. Well, heck. We had it for a second and then it went away. He's hard to read lips on. Okay. Why is that not going? Why can you guys not hear that? I don't know. Anybody got an idea? I'm trying to hear the video, Brenda. Can you hear it when I play it? There's something weird with the volume or the audio. Man, 
I've got I dug this up special for Ian. I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> you can see the blips. <laughs> That's true, Ian. <laughs> well, I thought I had it on, Tina. It's on there. Let me check and make sure. Hang on a minute. Let me make sure I got Well, I've got it on there, too. So, I mean, it should be on. Try again. Hello. Negative Ghost Rider. What? No volume. Okay, babe, I'm working on it. Ow. I'm working on it. Ow. Man, she's mean. All right, I killed that video. Let me see if I can read. It'll stop there in a minute. Let me start it. Let me try to start all over. But he just said these are long, very long-lived fish. The oldest one they've caught, I don't know if this is in the country or down here, is over 150 years old. That's one reason they get so big. Those giants they catch out there in the lower snake are, are old fish. And some of those things are 15 feet long. But they're a different species than this one, aren't they? I think they probably are, but they're all related. Yeah. But these, I don't think these ever get that big, but that one that kid had was a big one. Man, I can't figure out this volume thing. I've got it turned on there. I thought if I turned, I thought you might be getting an echo, but I turned it off here. I can't hear it. But apparently you can't either. We don't hear nothing. What happened? What'd you say? Are you able to read that? Is that a fucking video now? Yeah, but your your voice is like now I can't hardly hear you. How about now for me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, that was that was because I had that on it. I turned the volume off, so I'm going to read. I'm reading like everybody else. I slowed the video down so that the written words would be there and stay longer. So I'm sorry, guys. I wanted to show this because it's some of the guys that worked on this project are people I knew. And, uh, and in fact, I met this guy along the way, but I, he, you know, probably wouldn't know me to walk up to me.
nav markers. I don't know if that was a female agent or just some kind of attack. I'm not sure. I don't know if that's where they're at, but they he said they found some of these big guys down at, as far as Gunnersville, which is actually in north northern Alabama, right below the Tennessee line, or not too far. <coughs> Those are pretty nice fish, though. And and another thing might be interesting, might not. You got Zap, by the way. I see it. What did I do? Ian said he can't sleep while reading. <laughs> well, you're just going to have to stay awake for this one, Ian. Sorry, buddy. I can't seem to figure out the sound. And I've done this before, so I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> Why did I get shot? I don't random? know. Is it just yeah. random? It might be. I think, I think it it's is. just random. Oh, hey, Shelly. I didn't know you'd come in. Welcome. She said they have sturgeon fishing there on the Black Lake in February. There's a limit that can be caught. Okay. Well, that kind of makes sense. To my knowledge, these fish produce caviar just like sturgeon in Europe, but they're not the same. I have seen and heard of it being sold, like Tennessee River caviar or something, but I don't know anything more about it than that. I've never been one to really get into caviar, but it's my understanding that some of the females can be milked for eggs at a certain time of the year. And I always, I, as far as eating these guys go, I don't know. I, I guess I always thought they were probably pretty bony, but I'm really not sure because I've never sliced into one. You know, a lot of their bones are on the outside of their body. Yeah, they're, they're kind of a, yeah. They've got osteoderms like a crocodile. That's why I have Mark in here. He brings, he brings in his great big words. Like osteoderm. And impressive. That's, that means a, bo a bony piece of skin. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, all all the species of sturgeon have eggs that would make caviar. Yeah. I, whatever differences it is between here and there, it's, it's they're different. not they're they don't get near as big. Are well, the the northwestern species might get as big as a beluga they call them the big sturgeons in russia yeah or siberia or wherever they are you're absolutely right shelly these are very prehistoric fish as far as fish goes you know things like sturgeon look how flat the body that, that's an actual minnow of, of a sturgeon he's holding there look how small but look how flat his his belly and face is I'm not sure what you're getting at there, Tina, but just remember that the guys on the show here are, are, have gray whiskers, too. <laughs> you can tell a couple of different ways on these guys, not the, not the gray whiskers. I, usually on a fish, you count, you can actually if you get a microscope, and you can see some of them with the naked eye, but the scales. We were taught to age fish by counting the rings on the scales. And it's like much like the rings of a tree. They grow a little longer each year, basically, during a certain time of the year. And then you get rings much like a tree, and you can count those rings if you know what you're doing and have a scope. And I mean, you got to get pretty close. Is that, am I right there, Mark? I remember that correctly. You're remembering it right. Now, the on, on, on fish like catfish, you got to take their ear bones, if you will, the otoliths, and slice those and look at those to age it. But once you kill it to get the otolith, it's a dead fish anyway. Why do you why do you need to know how old it is? <laughs> True. Tell I said, guess your sample your sampling population, so True, true. Yeah, and I mean that's that's the 
well, that's the bare facts about any time you're sampling a population or trying to study it is there are collateral damage or sacrifices. But on a sturgeon, you, they've, the, I think you, they can age those osteoderms, the big, those big scales. Right. Wide. Yeah. Um, I think, but I've never handled sturgeon. I've never. No, never I've handled. never got to either. I knew some people that went down for the releases. Kelly was talking about the largest one caught in Michigan was 240 pounds. Yeah, I've seen them catch them in like the, like in those rivers in Washington and Oregon. Yeah. And they look like they're 15 feet long. I mean, they're enormous fish. I can remember way, way back when the, the when the old American Sportsman Show used to come on ABC. At least once a year, they'd go out somewhere in the Snake River or one of those rivers out to Columbia or somewhere out there, and they would get they would fish for river sturgeon. Yeah, out there. and they would sometimes end up pulling one in that was the length of the boat. They just bring it up to the top of the water and then they'd release it. Right, a fish that size has got to be well over a hundred years old, I think. Uh, certainly, at least a hundred. If you cut one open. Are you a sturgeon, sir? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get shocked. <laughs> turgeon, turgeon. I guess you would be. In. There, you just got zapped, buddy. <laughs> yes, yes, Tina, that would be true, but most bony scale fish don't live that long. In fact, I'm not sure any of them do, but yes, that's how it would work. That's They're right. sure smiley. They sure are. They must really like that sturgeon fish. Those TWRA fisheries biologists are smiley folks. Yep, they're having a good time. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it this way, but I will. They're getting paid to go fit and be out on the water. What What's better than that? Right. <laughs> I used to think that a lot when I was out there, too. I thought, good God, I'm getting paid for this. We used to, I used to joke about walking backwards to get my paycheck so I couldn't wouldn't show my face. <laughs> That's but it ain't always that fun. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. No. There were plenty of times when it might not have been worth the paycheck. You got zapped in. It was well worth it, he said. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the fishes of Tennessee. Now, like I said, if you really are were to be interested, uh, one, I'm sure if you find that video, that link in the slideshow in the video is correct. Uh, you can hear the you can hear what you're talking about. But if you go into if you go to Google and Google Tennessee darters, Tennessee river darters, or anything like that, you'll get scads and scads of pictures of of all kinds of darters and. Uh, of various species they're not always labeled but you, there's really nice color pictures and uh, one of the fish i didn't put on there that's fairly common in the creeks are sculpin um i really didn't put much about chubs other than those bigger ones but they're pretty common in the creeks here or in places anyway and they get netted up and used for fish bait by some people Tina said, that's not something I ever said about my job. Which one was it? It was fun and you were getting paid for it. You're welcome, Ian. I try to I try to keep you happy, buddy. You're you're especially now that you're on the payroll. Describe. <laughs> oh, Mike. Okay, buddy. Thanks for coming in. I we didn't see Diana today, so when you let her out of her room or whatever and lock the tell her we said hi. <laughs> Let her out of her room. <laughs> Move like one day closer to retirement over and over. Oh <laughs> okay, I got you. Are you so you're saying you never had one of those 
fundraiser. You, you thought, can't. Well, you I, can't believe you're getting paid to do yeah, this. Yeah. Okay. I, I get that. I've had that job too. I'll be honest with you. It took a lot for me to get to that point, and I'm honestly many times have wished I had Mark's job because he got to do a lot more out with out in the field and do more. I worked with habitats a lot and got to go out sometimes, you know, with the fish guys or other people. But but it it took a lot to get there. Uh, going to school when you're 40 in your 40s is not that easy to do and you got two kids and all that so yeah there were times when i was out there on the boat all day long or maybe for a week that it might have been hot and uncomfortable but i still looked at it like wow <laughs> i'm getting paid to do this you know i'm getting paid to be out in the woods all day and when i walk when i walk boundary line a couple of times during my career at tva i was by myself and in some pretty neat country. And uh, honestly, if it hadn't been so hard getting back and forth between the truck, it'd been a lot of fun. It was uh, just, you know, because there was nothing there then at that time. Tina says, I think she was doing work today from what Mike said when he got, yeah, I know, but I still have to give him a hard time, Tina. You know, I, 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 after what he said about what did he say? What was it he said about giving her a whack? Or I don't know. He said something because we were going to tell on him. He wasn't supposed to be making fun of her. Oh, that yeah, that's right. He was she was at she was at some Air Force Academy thing. Yeah, with something. cadets. What what did I? What what did he say? New Hard family call the worst names. Okay, that was. I know he's in here. I can't, I'm going to find him. I can make fun of Diana today because she's at the Air Force Conference for the cadets. Oh, I think it's it while we were talking about moose. The moose are loose. Sounds like Diana. You said moose, an ugly, a cow moose was about the ugliest thing you've ever seen when she was charging or something to that effect. And, Di, and Mike, Mike said... Sounds like Diana when she gets mad and breaks my ribs. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> that was the deal. Yep, that's when you were the new guy. Yeah, that was when I was the new guy. You're absolutely right. <laughs> that part was true. I've been thinking about being a park ranger. I'd love to get paid to be in the woods. You know, there's different levels of park ranger, Shelly, and depending on what you want to do it for, uh, and I don't know about up there, but I knew people that work with the park service seasonal. And, uh, you know, if you've got enough background or are willing to, to learn some things, they probably, you could probably get a job as like a interpreter. Lord knows you can get a job just showing people about photography in any park I know of. Um, not with their ears pinned back. Yeah. If you've never seen something like that with its ears pinned back coming at you, and that's another example. You ain't lived. Their face is like this long. <laughs> yep. I knew, but anyway, Shelly, there's all kinds of work like that. If you can, you know, if you want to be out doing some of that stuff, you just have to look around. And there may not be a, in your area right now, but that was the thing I... I I kind of missed out on and and I don't know if I'd have done this much. And I don't know if I'd liked it for sure, but I sure would like to have tried it. I knew young people coming out of college with degrees and, you know, they want to go get a job and get experience. And there were so many jobs that you could get in the greatest places on earth for like the season. And, you know, it wasn't a long lasting job and you weren't going to have benefits, but you'd get paid for it. And you'd be out in the woods at places like Crater Lake or Yellowstone or, I mean, <laughs> there was just all kinds of stuff. I knew a guy went to Crater Lake twice to work out there. I've lived in that case, a cow, but still in 10. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that works because there is such a thing as 
the FMC. So that implies <laughs> an FMC. <laughs> fast mean cow. You fast, know what that is. The fast mean cow. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly says, Yep, I've done some research. Three quarters of Michigan is fourth. Well, that's a good that's a good point. I'd like to look at Michigan from a perspective of its forest. I wonder, because Tennessee's that way. Tennessee has like a high percentage, 60, 70% has trees on it now. But a hundred years ago, it didn't. They it was it was logged and timbered to hell and back. And there was just a lot of areas that were denuded and had no trees. That's why TVA was in the tree business when they first started. And uh, I was just wondering, if, and you can tell people don't realize they go out in the woods and they see these big trees, but what they don't think about is how old is that tree. And I've been in a lot of forests here that just look like they were old. You know, what some people might say, oh, this is old growth. Look at that tree. Well, you really count that tree and it might be 60, 70 years old. So a lot of them aren't near as old. Something knocking on my door. Oh, the wind's picked up. Um, you know, so a lot of times the forests aren't as old as they look. There's, there are areas, of course, that, that would differ. Tina says she has seen an angry horse with her ears <laughs> back right before she sh shut me off her back. <laughs> I've had that happen too, Tina. <laughs> I used to ride a pony a lot, and he was bad for that. If he was tired of you being on you, he'd find a low rent limb, and he would take you off <laughs> if you weren't prepared. He knew that trick. He about Put me through the roof of the second floor of the barn one day. Although I think he had help for that. Oh, broke your collarbone. Wow, that's a bad thing. You know, all the times I got through off those ponies and stuff, I don't think I ever broke anything that I'm aware of. Which I was I have to believe I was lucky. But I, I got on that pony in the stall one day, and somebody stuck him or did something to him in the rump where I couldn't see him. I had some pretty mean cousins I learned later in life. <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't know how I kept him busting my head on the the beams <laughs> of the barn floor. That's oh, I did. What, I had some cousins. cousins were good for. Yeah, I, yeah, you might be right. That research should be done on cousins. <laughs> I bet we could write some chapters on cousins because <laughs> I might have been involved on the other side occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like I'm the one that always got whapped or knocked <laughs> off a horse. Or Sometimes you have to take the offense. <laughs> Brenda, are you serious? What time is it? Well, hell, it's time to get off. Well, guys, thanks for being. I'm gonna shut. shut I'm gonna start shutting this down because Brenda says my eggs are ready. And you it's know, eggs are ready. well, I realize it's 22 afternoon actually, so it, they they should. Well, eggs. I haven't had anything to eat. It's brunch. Is that what you're saying? I had a banana with some peanut butter on it for, at seven o'clock for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> I, I I like them. <laughs> I just. I quit eating the bread. I just put the peanut butter on the banana and just eat it. What do you mean you quit eating the bread? Is that a sandwich? Oh, I used to. Oh, I, did you not eat peanut butter and banana sandwiches? No. <laughs> do you like either one of those two items? Is that like un-American? I love both of them, but I don't like them together. But have you ever tried them together? Um, I don't think so. Well, you need to try them at least once. Slice the bananas, not too thick. Put one side with peanut butter on it. Put that jam that bread together <laughs> like a jam sandwich. And eat it. You need to try it at least once. I mean, I grew up eating banana and peanut butter sandwiches. I like that better than I like peanut butter and jelly, actually. I thought oh, you were yeah, going to say peanut butter sandwich and tomato soup. Well, no, that's a, that's good too. Although I I'll be honest with you, I, usually I had a grilled cheese sandwich with my tomato soup. But, well, that's good too. Yeah, <laughs> but Ken Sylvie method was the peanut butter. Sandwich. Peanut butter, and that was just peanut butter only, right? Nothing else on it. Peanut butter sandwich and a 
and and tomato soup made with water, not milk. Water, not milk. You know, I used to think I liked it with milk, but I don't really. I, I just seem to have water in it now, nowadays. I don't. Oh, Shelly, you made some banana nut bread. He's making banana nut bread. Man, I'm locked out. I've been trying to get my wife to make banana nut bread for a year now, and I still haven't had any. <laughs> she makes some good banana nut bread, but I don't know what's got in her. Elvis is fine. Oh, jeez. Quit that. <laughs> Elvis, yeah. That was famous. Real that. cheese and tomato soup, cold weather comfort food. That's right. Elvis French toast. What's this? Toast with sliced <laughs> bananas and peanut butter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking that his was, you know, grilled or something. And uh, what was it? Eddie Murphy or somebody used to say, give me, one of them, give me another one of them peanut butter sandwiches. Uh, what was his wife's name? The first the one that. Uh, not Phyllis. The one that was probably more famous. I don't. I think he had another one. But anyway, <laughs> give me another one of them peanut butter sandwiches. What did Brenda say now? Cause you keep <laughs> what? <laughs> you keep eating all the bananas, so she can't make banana nut bread, buddy. Oh, what's at the bottom? That's Tina saying that. What did Brenda say? Shelly's laughing at Brenda. <laughs> well, that is part of it, Tina, but, you know, sometimes banana, Sometimes I miss a day with banana. I might have to have something else for breakfast. And, you know, sometimes those bananas lay around here too long, and they can be made into nut bread, banana nut bread. Or just banana bread. I mean, they don't even have to have the nuts in them. I don't care. I like it better that way, but, you know, I understand some people can't eat nuts or don't like nuts, but I don't have to be one of those people. Priscilla. That's it. Priscilla. <laughs> Let me know one of peanut butter sandwiches, Silla. I don't remember what comedian used to do that joke or do that imitation, but pretty sure it was on Saturday Night Live. Well, I thought so, Tina, but I wasn't sure about that. All right, guys, I said I was going to wrap up. It's almost 1230, so I am going to do that. I, I know Mark's getting lunchy or hungry. I've seen him sneak off to get something to eat. I saw him chewing on it. Popcorn. Oh, yeah, well, popcorn's good. <laughs> you could have spelled it 14 ways, Tina. We probably wouldn't know, but I probably never would have noticed anyway. Brenda or Shelly might, but I wouldn't have. All right, guys. Thanks again for being here. I hope you like the fish show. I mean, I know it's probably boring some, but I just, you know, it's a little part of doing my thing for folks, so let you sit here and talk and have fun and drink coffee and learn a little bit about Tennessee fishes. Your state's probably got plenty of interesting fishes too. Uh, but I'm just lucky to live in the freshwater fish capital of the world or the United States pretty much. So I figured that'd be a good topic. So Ian, Mike's gone, Tina, Shelly, Brenda, Anybody else, Dave, anybody else that's still in here, thank you. Love you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next week. If the good Lord's will, then the creek don't rise. I ain't seen any creek sign lately, so I think we're okay. Bye-bye.